All right, so continuing where I left off yesterday. So we're supposed to translate between the recursive and the explicit definition. Uh, this is definitely explicit. It is straight and to the point, because if I wanted the 10th term, I would throw the 10 in. But it's definitely explicit. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to write a couple of terms out and see what the pattern is. I can kind of see it, but, you know, let's, let's find the first term, because you've got to have the first term for the recursive rule. So a sub 1 is negative 2 plus 7. Can't write this morning. Times 1 minus 1. Well, that's going to be 0, so a sub 1 is just negative 2. a sub 2 is going to be negative 2 plus 7. I'm just off on it plus 7 times 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1 times 7 is 7. That's going to be 5. I'm willing to bet the next term is going to be 12. Let's see. A sub 3 is negative 2 plus 7 times 3 minus 1. Now 3 minus 1 is 2 times 7 is 14. Take away 2 is 12. So here's my numbers. Negative 2, 5, 12. And what you should see is we are adding 7. Right there. We're adding 7. Now let's make the recursive rule now. The nth term, the first term was negative 2, so negative 2, and then n is 1. And from there on, we're adding 7. And this is an arithmetic sequence. We're adding 7. So a sub n minus 1 plus 7, so long as n is bigger than 1. And there is the recursive rule. And I know exactly how kids feel about recursive rules, which is why you'll probably never go into computer science. Moving on to 12. Find the sum of an arithmetic series with a given number of terms, a sub 1 and a sub n. So it's 10 terms, and the first term is 4 and the 10th term is 31, you're supposed to find the sum. So this is a formula given to us by Gauss. It says the sum of n things is n over 2 times a sub 1, which is the first term, plus a sub n, which is the last term. So I've got everything I need. Sum of 10 terms. N is 10. Sum of 10 things is going to be 10 over 2. First term is 4. The last term is 31. I don't know why I wrote a 5 there. It's supposed to be a 2. And 10 over 2 is 5, and 4 and 31 makes, what, 35? 5 30s is 150. 5 5 is 25. Put them together, 175. Magic, eh? <laughs> All right, you know, I use this as sigma notation. <clears throat> now, I notice that this n over 2 minus 9, it looks conspicuously like mx plus b. Maybe you could think of it as 1 half n minus 9. And the deal is, if I look like mx plus b, I am arithmetic. This is just a line. You're always adding the same thing. This thing's adding a half as you move from left to right. But because it's arithmetic, I get to use the summation formula for arithmetic. S of n things is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n, which I just did. All right? But I'm going to have to find the first term. And I can look over here at sigma, and sigma says I find the first term by plugging in 1. So a sub 1 happens when you plug a 1 in, so half minus 9, and that's negative 8.5 if you like decimals, or negative 17 halves, it's really up to you. I'm going to go with negative 17 halves. Like what did Milbreath just do? How did he do that? Let's just see if Milbreath is right. 1 half, because I think some kids are convinced they just make things up. Minus 9, negative 8.5, math, answer crack. <gasps> I beg God, I was right. Who would have thought that? Anyways, I find the 12th term by plugging in 12. 
So it's going to be 12 over 2 minus 9. 12 over 2 is 6. 6 take away 9 is negative 3. And how many things are there? The number of things is the high number, 12, take away the low number, 1, which is 11 things. Oh, we got to add one back. Seems silly that I'm going over this, but there's a reason for that. There's 12 total things. So I'm going to find the sum of 12 things. It's 12 over 2. First term is negative 17 halves. The last term is negative 3, which I'm going to write as negative 6 halves. I don't know why I would do such a thing. I don't have a clue. 12 over 2 is 6. If I put these two numbers together, negative 17 and negative 6, I get negative 23, all over 2. All right. 6 over 3 is 2. I'm sorry, 6 over 2 is 3. And 3 times a negative 23 shall be negative 69. Could have picked up a calculator. Could have. Didn't. No need to. Moving forward with my life. 15, we got a race car driver. A race car driver travels 34 feet per second of the race. And if the driver travels, it should say an additional 3.9. 3 if the driver travels 3.5 additional feet each subsequent sequence second, how many feet did he travel in 52 seconds? So what I'm doing is I'm adding 3.5 additional feet each sequence second. And so like the first second, he travels 34. The next one's 37.5. The next second, this car is really booking him, is 41, and so forth. What we have here is we have arithmetic. We are adding. So we're just going to create a rule here. The arithmetic sequence is a sub n is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. And I'm going to have to write a rule before I can do part 1 or 2. I just have to, plain and simple. I should probably made this a three-part question, but I didn't. But anyways, the nth term of this sequence is the first term, 34 plus n minus 1 times the common difference of 3.5. And I'll clean this up and make it look like mx plus b. 3.5 times n is 3.5n. 34 minus 3.5 should be 30.5. Now, why is that important? Because it's saying how many feet did he travel in 52 seconds? That is a summation idea. How many feet in 52 seconds? It's going to be the sum of 52 things. And it's going to be the number of those things, which is 52 over 2, times the first term, which is 34, plus the last term, which happens at 52 seconds. So we're going to have to plug a 52 in a sub 52 is going to be 3.5 times 52 plus 30.5. 156. And then we got a 26. This is going to be 182 plus 30.5. So that's 212.5. Double check my math there. I got 156, 26, 76, 612. Yeah, I'm good with that. He's moving, isn't he? I probably will switch over the calculator here just to make sure I get this right. We put 34 and 212 together, we get 246.5. I'll do that. And that's we're actually wrong, 256. There we go, 256.5. I gotta multiply that by 26. So, 
6,669 foot. Hmm. Quite a bit. A little over a mile. Actually, that's not very fast at all. That's barely a mile in 52 seconds. I would have expected more. I guess he's accelerating rather slowly. He really is. All right, how many seconds will it take to travel 20,725 feet? So what we have here is we have a sum. So I'm thinking S of N is N over two times the first term plus the last term. And I know a couple of things. I actually know that this goes here. And I know this goes there. And I have an equation that I can put there. So uh, there's quite a few things that are known. And that only leaves this, which is the number of seconds. It's just simple substitution. 20,725 is equal to n over 2, which is unknown, a sub 1, which is 34, and a sub n, hopefully I did this right in my head yesterday when I came up with the question, 3.5 n plus 30.5. 2725, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to combine some like terms. 34 and 30.5 should be 64.5. I'm going to shrink this up so I've got some writing room. I'm going to get rid of this division of two by doubling both sides. I'm going to show big on it. Two's cancel on the right, by the way. Then I'm going to distribute my n. Get it somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is going to seem kind of weird, but I'm going to double everything because I don't like these fractions, what they are. I know you're looking at decimals, but it's fractions. It's like 128 over 129 over 2. So 82,900 is 129n plus 7n squared. Now, this is an Algebra 1 standard. What we're going to do is we're going to shift everything right, rewrite what we call standard form of a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 on the left or the right, doesn't matter which one it is. 0 equals 7n squared plus 129n plus 82,900. In a perfect world, I can fact that this, but this isn't a perfect world. I'm going to pause this real quick to make sure this works out because I might have to change this problem. So give me just a second. All right, so amazingly, yeah, I came up with this in my head yesterday correct. I was just verifying it. Of course, I just made a mistake. Maybe you caught it. But when you move that 80,000 to the other side, it wouldn't be a positive anymore. It'd be a minus. All right, here's what we're going to do. This thing, your little song goes x equals negative b plus or minus square root and b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There's a, there's b, there's c. All right, plug them in. You should remember doing this negative 129 because opposite b plus or minus square root 
129 squared, so that's b squared, minus 4 times a, which shall be 7, times c, which is negative 82,900. And it's all over twice a, twice a 7. All right, so inside that square root is 233,000, sorry, 2 million. 337,841. What I did is I literally just typed the numbers in. I guess I should show that, otherwise you think I'm just making this stuff up. There's b squared minus 4 times a, which was 7, times c, which was 82,000 something. 900. There we go. Stop it in the way. Oh, sign mistake. Negative. There we go. Now the square root of that is like 1500 something. 1529 maybe. 1529. Well, remember that. Anyways, it's over 14. The square root of this was 1529, so x is negative 129, plus or minus 1529, both pieces over 14. Now, if I do negative 129 plus 1529, I get 1400, and it's over 14, which is 10, 10 seconds, all right? If I do the minus operation, I don't get an answer that makes sense. I get negative 1658 over a 14, which is negative 100, it's about negative 118.43 seconds. The second answer was gotten to validly, but it doesn't make any sense. In mathematics, we call an answer that works out mathematically, but is nonsense, extraneous. I could have swore I just picked a different color. Let's try that again. Extraneous. Well, anyways, here's the right answer. 10 seconds. <clears throat> Fun little problem there, but you got to go over the quadratic formula. You got a song sung to you. That ought to make you feel special. I'm sorry nobody ever sang that thing to you. It's crazy. You had to be a junior in high school before somebody sang you the quadratic formula. It's like you're not loved or something. I don't know. Anyways, I sang to you, so hope you enjoyed the video. You probably didn't because, you know, it's your homework. <laughs>